What's going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to preview free agent targets for the Portland Trailblazers as free agency starts in less than 24 hours. We'll have a live stream that starts at approximately 2 p.m. Pacific time, an hour before the free agency floodgates open. So come join us on the channel. We will have live Twitter feeds on the screen as well as a cool graphics package. We'll also have a free agency preview stream later tonight on Blazers Uprise Live, so hopefully you can check us out. That is our second. We'll also have a free agency preview stream live on our second channel, Blazers Uprise Live, going live at approximately 9.45 tonight, so hopefully you can join us for that and you can ask us questions as we head into a monumental day. With that being said, let's take a look at top free agent targets for the Portland Trail Blazers, and this is going to be three sections, sign and trade targets, MLE targets, and lower end targets that could be for the minimum or the biannual exception or whatever. The first sign and trade target is Draymond Green. I dropped a whole video on what it would take for the Portland Trail Blazers to try and land Draymond Green in a sign and trade from the Golden State Warriors. I talked about why it's not feasible to get Draymond Green with an MLE. That's just not enough money for him. And it is a long shot, but Draymond Green would make Dame happy. He's the guy that Dame wants and would come in and start next to Jeremy Grant at the forward spots. The second target is Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks who opted out of a player option that would have paid him approximately approximately $40 million. It'll be interesting to see if Chris Middleton fields offers on the open market or if it's a situation where Milwaukee has already agreed to an extension with him, a re-signing that he will sign right when the floodgates open at 3 p.m. Pacific. So, Chris Middleton could be a target, though, to come in and be that starting three. He was injured all year last year, but before that was an all-star caliber player. Won a championship as the number two guy on a team. Can shoot the three ball at a pretty high clip. Plays some solid defense and then can also pass the ball a bit. So he would be an intriguing target for the Portland Trailblazers. And I think he might be a guy that would be good enough to keep Damian Lillard happy. And as far as the sign and trade goes for Chris Middleton, it would likely be Anthony Simons, Nasir Little, and filler salary. Maybe a Keon Johnson. And Anthony Simons makes a ton of sense for the Bucks as a lead guard that can kind of create his own shot as that has been what Milwaukee has been missing. They have enough good defensive pieces that Anthony Simons isn't going to hurt their defense and that shooting paired next to Giannis is a really good fit as well. So if the Blazers could get traction on a Chris Middleton sign-in trade, Anthony Simons would be the guy going back to Milwaukee would make a ton of sense. The third guy is definitely a target on the Blazers list, and that is Cam Johnson of the Brooklyn Nets. The Blazers have supposedly had interest in him the past year or so, and he makes sense a guy that could come in. He's a solid team and positional defender, not really much of an on-ball stopper, so the Blazers are still missing that, but would come in and start at the forward spot next to Jeremy Grant. Anthony Simons in a straight-up sign and trade is what is most likely in that scenario. The Brooklyn Nets have a lot of forwards and wings. They kind of need a lead guard, so Anthony Simons could come in and be that. And the Blazers have the opposite problem. They have a bunch of guards. They need a forward, the caliber of a Cam Johnson that can shoot the hell out of the three ball. And last year, per 36... Averaged almost 20 points per game. He can score the ball. His numbers were pretty close to Anthony Simons's, so Cam Johnson makes sense as a target. And the fourth sign and trade target is a sneaky one. We haven't really talked about him, but that is Brooke Lopez of the Milwaukee Bucks. And Portland might be looking to upgrade the center spot defensively, and Brooke Lopez might be their way of doing it with the Milwaukee Bucks just being willing to take on Yusuf Nurkic back in a sign-and-trade deal in order to have something at the center spot because Milwaukee doesn't really have assets left over. So if a team without cap space is able to uh, pry Brook Lopez loose. I think Milwaukee is just looking for anything back for him so they can recoup some of that value. So Portland could maybe go into free agency going after Brook Lopez, having confidence that Milwaukee would sign and trade him to Portland for use of Nurkic. Now, I think Portland would have to throw another salary because I think you're going to have to overpay Brook Lopez. I think there's a lot of teams that want him. And I'm not too keen on Brook Lopez. I don't think he looks as good defensively in Portland as he did in Milwaukee. Milwaukee, where he ran primarily drop scheme and had guards that fought really well through screens, which made that easier on him. I'm not super high on Brooke Lopez as a target, but I think it could be a possibility, so that's why he's on this list. Now let's move on to MLE targets. The first one has been a guy that I've been raving about all season long, and that is Bruce Brown from the Denver Nuggets. The Blazers had interest in Bruce Brown during last year's free agency period, elected to go with Gary Payton II, and that did not pan out. That absolutely backfired. 
Bruce Brown ended up going to the Denver Nuggets on a taxpayer mid-level exception, so less money than the Blazers gave GP two weeks, and he ended up winning a championship and playing himself into a bigger contract. The problem is, with his pairing in Denver, is that he only played there one year, so he only has non-bird rights, which means that the Denver Nuggets can only re-sign him for up to 120% of his previous contract, while going over the cap and not using a free agent exception. And Denver is so far over the cap that they don't have a full mid-level exception to offer Bruce Brown. So using his non-bird rights, they could offer him approximately like 7.6 or 7.8 million, somewhere in that range. If they want to go over that, they basically have to treat him like a normal free agent and use a full mid-level exception, which they can't because of the hard cap that's in place with that and their salary totals. And Denver could elect to shed salary, but a lot of their high salary guys are key parts of their teams that I don't see them trying to trade away for nothing just to keep Bruce Brown. I don't see them trading away Contavious Caldwell Pope, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic, obviously. Like, there's not really ways to clear enough space in a way that makes sense for Denver in order to sign Bruce Brown to the full level exception. Bruce Brown would make a ton of sense for the Portland Trailblazers as I think he'd be a huge help to them defensively. He's a bit undersized at the small forward spot, but can play that spot, has played up his entire career, has even played some small ball center. This dude has basically played every position, has the strength and the smarts to be able to guard bigger players, and I think he could be a help for this Portland Trailblazer team as a guy that's become a solid shooter after that was a question mark early on in his career, as a guy that can make the right pass it's a connective piece, a solid athlete, and then brings it on the defensive end. The second target I'm not keen on, but Damian Lillard is, and that is Kelly Oubre, who played last season for the Charlotte Hornets. He's a guy that can fill it up, but isn't super efficient, plays okay defense at best, is probably a below average defender, isn't somebody who's going to pass too well, just doesn't seem like the type of guy who would be a winning player on a winning team, but Damian Lillard likes him, so... If keeping Damon Portland means going after Kelly Oubre with an MLE, then sure, do it. I would like to bring Kelly Oubre off the bench in such a scenario, and I would like for Portland to find a defensive small forward to start, and then off the bench you would have, I don't know, Scoot, Sharp, and Oubre, and maybe Oubre plays up at some backup for I, I don't even know how that would work without trading Ant, and you still have the four guards, and it would just be kind of a mess. I think the Blazers would need to make other moves, but if getting Kelly Oubre keeps Dame happy, I, I guess I'm for it. The third option is a defensive 3 and D small forward in Torrey Craig, who played for the Phoenix Suns last year, had a great first round of the playoffs against the Los Angeles Clippers, and then for whatever reason, Monty Williams benched him in the second round. Don't know why, Torrey Craig has had some really good moments and has played well in the playoffs for winning teams, and he's the type of guy with the type of mental makeup that makes sense on this Blazers team to be that perimeter point of attack defender and can bring it on that end of the floor and I think can do just enough offensively where he's not a liability. Also, it would be cool to have a guy named Torrey on this team, so you know I'm for that. The fourth option is a big man, that's Dwight Powell out of the Dallas Mavericks. And this would be for a lower contract, maybe a taxpayer mid-level exception, although I don't think the Blazers are going to go into the tax. And you can even throw Dwight Powell in the following category, which is lesser tiered targets, but Dwight Powell would be a guy that could come in, play a little bit of defense, finish as well at the rim, and is a decently mobile big man who can catch lobs and play in different pick and roll schemes. The one problem with him is his rebounding. He's actually a bit like Drew Eubanks in terms of not being able to rebound the ball super well, in terms of being kind of a mobile big man. I think he's just more fundamentally sound on the defensive end. He's not a guy that has come across as chasing blocks to me. He just is a guy who's solidly in position most of the time. And for Dallas, who was just a mess defensively last year, I don't think it was Dwight Powell's fault. I think it was all the perimeter guys. He did not have an easy task trying to protect the rim last season in Dallas in his 19 minutes per game. But he could come in and be a backup center behind Yusuf Nurkic that I think could play decent minutes if Nurkic got into foul trouble or got hurt. I think Dwight Powell could step up and just be solid and be kind of a lob-catching big man for Dame, Scoot, Cy 
diamonds to throw passes to. The final three targets are lesser tier targets. We're talking about probably minimum signings. The first one is Lake Oswego native Kevin Love, who got bought out from the Cleveland Cavaliers last season and went over to the Miami Heat, started multiple playoff games, got to play in the finals The Heat ended up losing, but Kevin Love is a guy who's been around the block, has championship experience, has a ton of experience in the NBA, and bringing him home to be the backup center uh, could be a cool story. And with the Blazers probably looking to pinch pennies, I think he's the type of veteran guy that Dame would like to play with. I don't think defensively he's good as a center off the bench. The defensive problems would probably continue, but at least he can knock down threes and rebound the ball, which is an upgrade over what the Blazers had last year, where I felt like whoever they were bringing off the bench at the center spot wasn't doing either of those things and wasn't really helping defensively. So Kevin Love could be a solid minimum signing option to come in and play some minutes at a backup center spot. I would like Portland to try and find another solid minimum center signing that could maybe play against certain matchups. If you needed a big off the bench, like a, a true big man, it would make sense to have somebody else other than Kevin Love. Uh, if the Blazers are going to go cheap at the backup center spot, I think they need to have a couple of different options that can give the Blazers different looks, and Kevin Love can definitely give you a look as a rebounding stretch big man. The second guy I was going to have was Andre Drummond, but there was just news that he opted into his player option with the Chicago Bulls, so he won't be available. So let's toss Nerlens Noel's name out there. He would be that type of compliment to a Kevin Love, where neither of these guys are going to wow you as a backup big man, but they both give you different looks. Nerlens Noel is just a non-factor offensively, but can catch lobs and... Uh, with a bench unit, maybe with Scoot Henderson leading the way, uh, who can throw lobs and pass the ball quite well. New Orleans Noel would make sense as a pick-and-roll partner with him. Uh, but then defensively, um, he's regressed, but he's still solid, still somewhat mobile, and could be that change of pace option from a Kevin Love that wouldn't have to play every game, but you could throw in there, and he could give you something defensively and be a rim-runner, lob-catching big. The third and final minimum signing option is Justin Holiday. Holiday has been an under the radar 3 and D type of wing for a while now, has the size to play both the shooting guard and small forward positions, and for his career is a 36% three-point shooter. However, last year in stints with the Atlanta Hawks and Dallas Mavericks, that three-point percentage regressed. He is 34 years of age, so this may be due to aging, but he shot 32%, which was his worst mark since the 2014-2015 season. If the Blazers are looking for vets and looking for 3 and D guys that don't have to play every game that are maybe the 10th, 11th man on a roster, I wouldn't mind taking a bet on Justin Holiday being able to become a 36-37% three-point shooter again. I think he brings enough defensively where if he gets his shooting back up to that clip, he'll be a solid role player in time that he gets. You're not going to expect him to do a whole lot, just knock down open shots and don't be a liability defensively, maybe help out on that end. And this is the archetype that I think the Blazers will ultimately end up looking at. A guy that's been in the league for 10 years and a guy that just two seasons ago was averaging 10 points per game on solid three-point shooting. Anyway, let me know what you think of these targets down in the comment section below. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts. As I said, stay tuned for the live stream tonight on our second channel and the free agency stream tomorrow going live at 2 p.m. right here on the main channel. With that being said, I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers!